Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a lockdown Saturday here in Melbourne. And of course, uh, let's continue the chat with the volleyball side of things in particular. And of course, uh, let's go down to the Mornington Peninsula in particular and go speak to the Mornington uh, Volleyball Club. And of course, we've got four very special guests joining us right now to tell us a bit about uh, how they've been coping in uh, lockdown slash isolation uh, during these uncertain times. Uh, thanks uh, all for you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, get okay. you to introduce yourselves and obviously what position would normally be seen all four of you on the court? I'll go first. Um, I'm Laura. I play a position called libero usually, but if I'm lucky, I get to play outside hitter, typically. <laughs> Um, my name is Olivia. Um, I've been playing volleyball for probably eight or nine years. I'm not sure. Um, on court, I play as one of the setters or opposite. So I, that allows me to also spike, which is something I really enjoy as well. Cool. I'll go. Uh, I'm Neil. Um, I've been playing for oh, 20 plus years now. Um, so I'm probably jack of all, but master of no positions. But my favourite is to play as middle blocker. And I guess that leaves me last. Um, so my name's Meg. I play generally in the middle, um, similar to Neil as a middle blocker. Um, and like Laura, if I'm lucky, I'll get a hit in the outside uh, position as well. So hopefully next season I'll have a few few turns in the outside position. Now, normally about this time of the year, uh, it would have been the state um, competition, um, state league competition. Obviously that's pretty much done and dusted uh, for 2020. Um, how devastating is that to not play any volleyball at all? Heartbreaking. Um, I think particularly so for our men's team uh, was our, going to be our first season together. So I think it was especially yeah, upsetting for us. Yeah, it's been a big change. Um, like every Saturday for from March through to September where you know, in danger on playing volleyball. And so to, I don't know, have Saturdays free feels kind of weird. Um, it does have the benefit of, you know, you get a Saturday free, but it doesn't feel the same. You don't feel like you've earned it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. Um, a lot of us play volleyball up to three times a week. You know, we have training on Monday nights. Some of us play in the social comp on Wednesday nights and then we have our Saturday games. So to have all of that ripped away from us is definitely hard. Um, yeah. And it's more than just like playing the sport with your friends. It's also actually just like hanging out with people, being around other people and just like having people who also really enjoy the sport as well. So, yeah. Now, what have all four of you been doing um, in lockdown slash isolation to uh, get yourselves ready for the 2021 season? The um, key thing for me is trying not to put on any weight. So um, I've taken up taken up running as some cardio exercise and then as I live in a two bedroom unit, so any sort of workout's a bit challenging. So a lot of um, body weight exercise, those sorts of things. So. Yeah, I'm the exact same. Um, I've been doing a lot of running. Um, and honestly, sad to say, but I actually think I'm more fit in lockdown than I ever was in the season. Uh, I've been running so much. Um, so it, it's got its pros and its cons, I guess. Yeah, I mean, third time's the charm. I'm also running a lot. Um, I've got minimal equipment, so I can do home workouts and a bit of resistance training and stuff. Um, trying to work on the things that perhaps in the gym I'd be neglecting. So my flexibility and my mobility and uh, looking after the injuries that perhaps I'd just shove aside normally. So trying to fix the things that uh, I've got time to now. Yeah, I, uh, I don't run. <laughs> I try to run, but more, more of the time I uh, go for long walks. I ride my bike. It's very hard to practice volleyball on your own. I think it can get very repetitive because it's it's very much a team sport. But um, where I can, I try and find a nice tall wall and just set the ball, pass the ball to myself. But I don't get to do it much at the moment because of rainy weather. But yeah. 
Now, uh, let's talk a bit about, I'll, I'll start with Neil first. You mentioned that this year was meant to be the first year for the men's team in the state league competition. Um, I guess, how was it like and how has the preparations been like uh, for the men's team? Um, so that's our, our men's division three team. It's the first season. Um, look, I think everyone was super excited and we'd spend a lot of time, I guess, trying to um, I guess, come together as a team. So we played our first tournament together last October. Um, and that was the first time we played together. And then from there, we started training and put a lot of work into, I guess, functioning as a team, um, running different plays and that sort, those sorts of things. So it was, I guess, really, really... Um, yeah, not not great to hear that the season's off and then to suddenly stop training after all this all the work we'd put in and how far we'd come since October last year. So yeah, that was particularly devastating. Now, I guess following up from that, um, I guess you mentioned about the tournament that you competed in in October um, last year. How did that all go? Um, okay, we didn't come last in the tournament, <laughs> so that was a that was a good start. Um, I think we, we finished third, so that was kind of a sign that we um, have some talent. It was just kind of getting together and, and working as a team, because I think that's one of the big things with volleyball is you've got to work as a team. It's just so important, so, yep. Now, I'll turn my attention to the women's team now. Now, anyone can answer this question. Tell us how did you go last year in the state league? Good question. I think there was about 14 teams in our division. Um, I think we finished middle of the rung. Um, yeah. Last few years we've been in the top in the top five or six. Um, I think we finished about sixth last year. So it was a good effort, and um, it's taken us a lot of many years to sort of solidify a solid spot in that. Um, it's the second highest women's division, which is a really big thing for our club because obviously we're quite a small club down on the peninsula. We don't have a huge um, sort of base to push teams up. Um, so to get into that second top division and, um, you know, be a real competitor in there has been awesome. So it was another great season and we were really happy. We did just miss out on the finals, but, mm. well, next year, I guess. <laughs> and how is the, the preparations like? to what was meant to be a season um, back in March? Uh, well, we uh, trained together and have trained together for a really long time. We kind of start the season off, you know, just getting our basic skills together and then we build up from there. So we, we'd started off doing, you know, with a really solid base, looking forward to trying to get back up near the top again this year. But uh, yes, unfortunately, haven't gotten too far with that. Uh, for both teams, who was the team that you wanted to beat this year? Oh. I don't think we'd established any rivalries yet. I think this is the season to determine who that would be. <laughs> I think for our women's team, uh, I imagine Liv and Laura will echo this, but we always have amazing games against Dandenong Volleyball Club. They're always like... They seem to have pipped us at the post the last uh, last few times we've played them, so it would be great to get back up against them. But they're, they're such a good team, and they're so fast and quick, and they really keep us on our toes. And I was, yeah, I love playing them, even though they uh, they seem to just get us every time. <laughs> yeah, they have an excellent defence. Um, they're just an amazing team. Yeah, very much all rounders on Dandenong. <laughs> so. Uh, now, tell us a bit about your team and, and especially a couple of players we should watch out for in your respective teams and you can't include yourselves. Um, I might go first and talk about uh, Olivia over here. She's got a bit of an epic sort of... So what the setter does is she sets backwards to Liv. Liv comes in from around the back of the setter and gives it a good old whack across the court. So uh, she's working on that, and it's getting it's getting pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. <laughs> I um, I would say something probably about both Meg and Laura. Laura is a killer libero, um, and outside hitter. Not to mention she's Laura is very short, and she still manages to somehow get up on that block. She tries her hardest. She is amazing. 
Meg, on the other hand, is an amazing spiker. I am honestly scared of Meg and so happy that she's on our team because I would not want to face her on an opposing side. Um, so yeah, I, I love all of my team members. Um, they all are amazing in their own unique ways and I love playing with them. I'd say uh, also our setter, Ashley, is an absolute gun. She can take any ball coming from any direction, shoot it to where it needs to be. She's quick on her toes and she has a deadly serve. Like being on the other side of that serve is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what we've got. Um, so Sam, who's probably the, the biggest guy on our team, I think he must be about six, six or six, seven. Um, he doesn't, doesn't have a huge leap, but he, um, he just has the reach to get up and just dump the ball on the opposition's head. Um, and then we've got Fury as well, who has an epic leap. He's probably, he's not super tall, but he has an epic leap and he can um, really get up there and hit the ball, get the covers off the ball into the, and grind it into the floor. So, yeah. uh, now for all um, for the, how did all for you get involved in volleyball and why did you choose it? Well, Meg and I have a uh, very similar story. We started volleyball in the very early years of high school, year seven or eight, and our sport teacher, Miss Anderson, was like, hey girls, like you're really good at volleyball. There's a club on the Mornington Peninsula and if you really want to get involved with the sport some more, you should, we, you, we can like organise a meeting, you can come down. And so a whole bunch of us from uh, the high school went down to the club and we tried out and we've been there ever since. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I've um i always had volleyball in my life growing up. Uh, I would say I definitely grew up in a volleyball community. My dad um, played volleyball throughout his high school life and formed a really strong group of friends that have are still friends to this day. And I sort of grew up in that environment. To tell you the truth, I didn't want to play volleyball when it was suggested to me. I sort of saw it as a sort of men's sport that I didn't really want to get involved in. Um, but I started, uh, like the girls in year seven, they, they're a bit older than me. So they were probably in year nine or 10 when I started. Um, and then I joined the club and I never turned back. I, I loved it so much and I'm so grateful for all the girls as well. Probably a similar story for me. Um, I don't think I actually had a choice. So my dad played volleyball since for as long as um, I can remember. Um, and he, I think, introduced me to it when I was about 10 or 11 and it started with it, the local club near where I grew up in South Gippsland and um, yeah, I've just played ever since. For, um, for me, the reason I have sort of taken to volleyball so well is I, I sort of played a lot of sports growing up. I tried lots of different things from gymnastics to tennis to basketball and even tried a bit of AFL during school. But um, with volleyball, you quite literally have a net between you and the other team. So you can be competitive in the best ways and it's, there's no, it doesn't quite get as vicious as maybe some of the other contact sports can get. Um, and so you can, you can really use it as an avenue to um, show, you know, your skills and not be afraid that it's... You know, taken the wrong way or anything not saying that I'm a big aggressive player or anything but um, you definitely um, have the avenue to play strong and play hard and it's celebrated and I think um, not a lot of sports can say that you know when you really give it your all and you you, you know you give the ball a good hit or uh, you know you throw yourself across the court to get it everyone's just um, super excited for it yeah now, all four of you mentioned right at the start uh, what position you all played on the court. Now, but it sounds like I think everyone's playing in different positions, I'm hoping. Um, now, I'm going to ask both of you this, all four of you this question. Tell us what does your position entitle for everyone who have no idea the sport of volleyball? Uh, so, I play libero, as I said. For It's a backcourt position. So, typically what I will do is I pair up with two other players on the court. Often it's the middles because they're really tall and because I'm so small, it, it kind of works. And I will sub them out in the backcourt and I basically have to get all of those difficult hits and difficult serves and I get put in the position where there's going to be a lot of like 
tough balls to get. So I, I often end up flat on the ground and that's all right. That's kind of the point of my role. I don't get to serve. Um, I can't like jump above the height of the net. There are a few restrictions on my position, but it's kind of like a specialty position in the backcourt. Um, well, as I mentioned before, I'm a setter or an opposite. Um, so for setting, essentially, you've got to put the ball up in the best way that you possibly can so that the spikers can hit the ball. Um, so, yeah, it, it is really difficult. You have to know your team so well when you're a setter because everyone takes the ball differently. Like, Meg doesn't like them like too high like sometimes she likes them in the middle so we call that a meter ball um laura you've got to make sure you don't put it too close to the net because she's she's a bit short so you have to sort of keep it off the net a little bit so that she can get it um there's so many different factors for every person who hits and being a setter you've got to know that um so it's a difficult position but it's one that i really love um, as, a, as a middle, uh, probably one of the most important defensive positions. So I guess really the key is to block the opposition's hits on every every attack. Um, and then I guess from an attacking, it's quite a, quite a fun attacking position to play too because you run some really fast sort of sneak attacks as well. You need a, need a good setter. So to Liv's point about the setter having to really know the players, um, particularly in the middle when you're running it really quickly. Yeah, Neil's pretty much got that spot on, same as me. Um, so blocking is a big part of my game. Um, and then getting to do some fun hits as well. And um, if I'm having a good passing game, I'll get to do some backcourt um, plays as well and a bit of serving. So a little bit of everything, but depends how we go and how the team's working and whatnot. Now, I guess any highlights about uh, all four of your volleyball journeys so far? I've definitely got one. Um, it would be, we were in Division 2 at the time, uh, a couple of years, maybe two or three years ago, I'm not sure. Um, but we were playing in the semi-finals against the Melbourne Renegades. And I just remember how hard it was for us to get up until that point of the semi-finals. And we knew that we were going up against a really difficult team, an excellent team. And to win that game, which was so close, I think it got to either four or five sets, um, was an amazing experience. I've never had such a amazing thing happen. It was, yeah, that was one of my highlights. I mean, I guess for me, every year is always, um, always highlights and, you know, just, games that play really well and even if you don't play well your team's just worked really well together and it's been um you know you just walk away from it feeling really good about the game even regardless of the result i always love those sort of moments um i was fortunate enough to win an mvp for the the division one year um so that was that was really cool we got to go to a presentation night at the end of the year and get a bit dressed up and see everybody in sort of fancy clothes and the that we usually play against um have a nice dinner maybe a glass of wine um and then got to sort of you know represent my club um with a with a win in the mvp so that was a that was a really cool moment um just sort of showed how well my team works together and you know, one of us was recognised and I mean, I'm thankful that it was me, but it could have been any of us. We all really did um, amazing that year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have, a, there are a lot of times where just like being amongst everything can get like so exciting and it's, you're often given a lot of opportunities to go and travel to different places to play volleyball. Like we have a, uh, tournaments throughout the year recently we um were entered into a tournament and we got to kind of make a mixed team because some of the division one girls were wanting to do a team and we had a few of the division three boys and we all got to put in a team together and play in a tournament and we might not have done very well but I think it was a, a really fun experience we got to kind of learn how these uh, new players and different players could all work together and we I feel like we learned a lot from one another in that experience, like being able to 
push the boundaries of, of the sport a little bit more with new players was really fun and I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, I think for me and what really cemented volleyball as my sport of choice was uh, when I was 16, um, participating in the Gippsland Sports Academy in their very first year that they had volleyball as part of their program. Um, so I still have some really great memories from that, but I think a lot of the skills coaching and participating in a lot of junior tournaments at that time um, was, I still have those memories and yeah, I'm still playing to this day, um, 18 years later. So yeah, that was really cool. Now, I know some of you just pretty much answered my next question in regards to, um, which is, what does the sport of volleyball mean to all four of you, and especially playing there at Mornington? Mornington is, I've always thought that Mornington differs from other clubs. Um, we're a very small club, as Meg mentioned before, and I think that in some way that sort of gives us an advantage a little bit on the social side where some clubs throw teams together every year that have never known each other maybe or only work together a little bit whereas we've worked with each other for years and I've always thought that that's sort of given us a leg up on other teams where we all know each other so well and we all work together so well and just amazing friendships so I guess Mornington for me is just like a family um, yeah. Yeah, I think our club is a really tight little community and um, we're kind of far away from a lot of the other clubs being being down on the peninsula. And I think that's another thing that really brings us together. Um, and like a lot of us do, as, as Liv said, we play multiple nights a week. So we have trainings, we run a social comp. Um, and we have the games on the weekend. We run a tournament each year or two tournaments now um but yeah i feel like this club for me is just as Liv said a kind of a big family we're all really close and um we're able to catch up and hang out and do things within the sport outside of the sport and that just it, it's really nice to have that in in the uh, area we live I, I moved to the peninsula about three years ago now um and joined the the social comp here in Mornington. And um, just to watch the club grow over that time, it's been really, really cool to see um, from a social comp with, was it six or seven teams to now too many teams, I think, to, to fit into the stadium to, you know, developing more teams to participate in the state league has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I guess, and in terms of what volleyball means to me, I mean, it's something that's always been there and part of part of my life from mostly playing social comps, but um, also with my dad as well. So he's, 65 now we still play together in a team so that, that's really cool too it's something we've bonded over as well over the years yeah i think i'd reiterate what everybody else has said um the club itself has been a big part of you know my um my sporting journey as well as you know being an important part of my social life and um my i suppose my professional development in a lot of ways it's helped me um you know learn how to help lead and show initiative and I've been able to coach some of the younger teams as well um, throughout the years um, so it's helped me in a lot of aspects of my life more than just you know a place to have fun which it certainly is um, so yeah it's been a hard year to be away from it all but definitely keen to get back to it and you know continue pushing the club forward and um, being part of the growth. Now let's finish up with a couple of light-hearted questions about your teammates. Uh, firstly, who had the most embarrassing moments on the court? I might nominate myself one of these. Um, <laughs> you get a lot of injuries, I mean, in sport in general. Usually it's doing something cool, like going for a good spike or a block. Um, but I think it was two or three years ago, one of the girls picked up the ball and was rolling it under the net to the other team um, politely and it rolled sort of towards me and I was like, oh, I've got to get out of the way of the ball. And rather than stepping to the side of it, I tried to jump over it and then I landed on the ball and I rolled my ankle and was out for like six weeks. <laughs> Just step to the side, Meg, don't jump over the ball. <laughs> so that was pretty bad. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a, I I have so many like awkward you think I'm going to get a ball and have it smack me in the face moments. Like just so many times where if somebody will like think that they've got it and you get punched in the face by a set of hands or like somebody's had a ball and it flicks off you and it plays off your face and I'm standing there in shock. And then the set is like, Oh great. I'll, I'll just play off of that. Like countless times have I been smacked in the nose with a volleyball and it's, it's, it's good every time. Sometimes we win a point from it. So, you know, that's, that's always nice. <laughs> I would say, sorry, I've got a bit of a hailstorm going on in the background, but um, there's been moments during game where you go for a set and it just smacks you in the head. You don't even, like, get the ball in your hands. And I can say that's probably happened to everyone. You just go for the set, smacks you in the head, and it's the most embarrassing thing ever, but it happens. And that's, that was <laughs> going to be mine. I reckon I could put a five-minute compilation together of me doing that. The ball sliding through the hands of the set. Um, the old Falcon's a good one too. I have a bit of a habit of probably opening my hands up a bit wide and not putting my head down when I'm blocking. So more than once I've got one into the face at point blank. So that's always good for a laugh for everyone else, not me. Well, I think everyone just answered my next question about Falcons. So I'll just uh, move on to the next question, which is uh, <laughs> who's the comedian in your team? Ooh. So I, I think we're still establishing those roles in our men's team. Some of the personalities are starting to come out, but I think maybe 12 months' time I could answer that question. I feel like it's definitely probably Laura um, for, for us. Laura's just funny in everything she does. It's just a, Like, Laura could be doing something that most people would think is completely normal, but it just, the way she does it, it's just hilarious. Uh, I can't think of any examples, but Laura's just, the, she's just hilarious. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I have a lot of enthusiasm and it, it can go in a lot of directions. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes you just got to see if you can roll across a line of balls on the floor. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's okay. It's part of learning. <laughs> uh. Um, now, best singer and dancer in the team? Singer is, is Laura, definitely. Um, Laura's a bit of a professional singer, actually. Um, oh. Dancer, I think we all have our own, we all have our own mm. unique dance moves. Um, yeah. Depends what we're doing. I think we all have a bit of a, bit of a boogie on the court, <laughs> if we're feeling it. But, um, yeah, singer, definitely Laura. Thank you. <laughs> I will say though, sometimes the the setup for a serve is like a dance move in itself. Some of our girls, like they've got they've got a very particular like warm up into the serve. Like Meg's got her two bounce, Liv's got her little like spin. Ashley Joplin will do this. Like it's there's a whole bunch of little tweaks that you little tweaks. What am I trying to say? A whole bunch of little moves that people use uh, to try and get that serve right. So that that in itself could be a dance, I think. <laughs> Maybe um, not best singer, but best motivational sound effects would be Sam for the men's team. Um, he'll uh, have the odd odd noise here and there when he feels things are getting a bit bit quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can hear that from the girls' court. You'll hear this weird noise, and be like, "Where's Sam?" <laughs> oh, well, looks well, like I've got to get down next year to uh, so hear all these uh, and see all these ones. Um, now, one last one before I let all you go, which is for everyone that should come down to Mornington to uh, play the sport of volleyball, how can they go about it? Well, we have a Facebook page, so Mornington Volleyball Club on Facebook. If you look that up, you should find us. Um, if you're wanting to just uh, try it out, we do have a social comp. Um, we we have teams occasionally we can have people come in um Liv might better explain this but they can come in and we can put you in a team to see if you like the sport otherwise you're always welcome to come to a training to try it out we have certain nights for certain teams so if you just look on our page that'll be that on the facebook page that'll be available yeah <laughs> is that it Exactly. Yeah. And we also have a uh, kids group as well, um, yes. which train on Monday nights. Uh, 
from I think it's six to seven but yeah I I teach those kids and they're all amazing and anyone is welcome so yeah Well, Ori, thank you so much for giving up your time to join us uh, on your weekend. And uh, obviously, uh, hopefully, uh, we can finally get on the way back on the court again in 2021, uh, down at Dandy. Uh, and, uh, He's hoping. Uh, let's hope, uh, of course, uh, the 2021 season uh, becomes uh, a more successful uh, season uh, other than uh, this uh, boring 2020 year. <laughs> let's hope, yes. Thank you for Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. And that's the Mornington Volleyball uh, teams, of course, the men's and the women's team, of course. Make sure we get down to Dan Ong in 2021 if it still is going ahead, uh, of course, uh, and cheer on the Mornington Volleyball uh, teams in the men's and the women's. There's more on the Smash Sports show right after this. Don't go away here on Lockdown Saturday. <laughs>